Well, it's been quite a journey, but here we are, the last level of Soul Blazer. But before we can start, we've got a little... Mm, I hesitate to call it a cinematic scene, but... <laughs> well, you'll see. Ooh, impressive. Little red stars appeared everywhere. Okay. And that is the world of evil, apparently. Often now he trots out the Phoenix's help thing. Unfortunately, we're going to need the last piece. A red hot something. We found the other two pieces while we were backtracking. The third piece is here somewhere. As are the Oh, what's the uh, I think it's the the soul armor and the soul blade. Oh, that's right, I picked up the recovery sword. Which heals you whenever you kill enemies. It's quite useful. And honestly, you can pick it up a lot earlier in the game, but as you may have noticed, you have to be level 20... What, 22? 21 to actually use it. This confused the heck out of me as a kid. I didn't realize the weapons had level requirements, because if you're killing everything that comes along, you can use all the gear fine. You never have to worry about it. You never, never even becomes an issue until you get the recovery sword okay let's switch back well, let's try some of the other magics ah, well this one does that the problem here is that uh, you have to wait for them to diffuse before doing it again and as you can tell it doesn't necessarily do a very predictable uh, attack pattern it's easy to miss and if you miss you gotta wait bugs. There's like those spheres, they disappear at the right most convenient moment to hit them, but uh... It's okay though. Unlike the blink, uh, the blink orbs, you can kind of catch their pattern and move to hit them for the spot where they're going to appear. Excuse me. Up here. And we have... Medical herb. Always nice. Also, really like the music for this area. This is a uh, probably my second favorite track, Lisa's theme being the first. But yeah, this was perfect for a last area, you know, last yeah, last area. Gets the blood pumping. Let's see, not too much. Like I said, there's, there's no area here to repair, so everything is basically just clearing the way and treasure. Most of which is useless. I think it's giving us 27,000 experience, 2700 experience, I should say. Yeah, we'll get Phoenix. There was actually an enemy near the end. Honestly, everything here is pretty easy to kill, but since most of it's in bases, once you've killed it, it remains gone. Flame matches. The, actual, the, the spikes do almost the same thing, except they only hit once. The only good thing about the flame pillars is that if they do it like right there, so they remain active for a while, they do a lot more damage at the, the points of impact. Oh. Doing a very good job avoiding these things. Ah, oh, that's an interesting place for the thing to appear. Unfortunately, that means I have to go all the way back to get it. Which I'm gonna have to do. Okay, I got another one of these statues. Not really much we can do about that. Okay, doing pretty good so far. I think there are three areas here we'll have to go through. Oh, let's check it out. Red Hot Ball, that's it. That's the last piece we need. Might as well go ahead and get it now, since... Well. Okay, and to get the Phoenix Magic, you have to go back to the mountain and talk to the king. The Gnome King. Which makes me wince every time I say it. Who is the Gnome King? Who is the Gnome King? <laughs>
I haven't watched that in ages. I gotta watch that again sometime. Great movie, Return to Oz, in case you don't know. Just love the effects of that movie. That just a phenomenal job on the characters. TikTok, easily my favorite. TikTok, the Royal Army of Oz. Oh, and Phoenix. And now he's oh, here we go. I am the Phoenix. I live on the Mountain of Souls. I will help you revive the world and protect the peace. As soon as I was called, Death Toll moved into position. I remember I've seen this in the past. Yeah, if you don't get the Phoenix magic, you get to this third area. And there's nothing there. Yeah, this is, they split this out on you. Now you need the Soul Blade and the Soul Armor. Fortunately, they are also in the last area, so you don't have to go and do any more digging. Also, there's nowhere else to dig. We found them. Yeah, that's the only spots left in the equipment. That's the only thing left we have to find. Oh, oh wrong way. <laughs> I can't delay my fight with evil. We have to go. Okay, up. Oh. Okay. Now, I'm trying to think of back, back whenever I played the others, the other games in this kind of series. Now, the, the next one kind of used a map system. That was that Mode 7 thing. You know, the Super Nintendo thing where they gave you the sort of illusion of 3D? Which, you know, at the time was still pretty impressive. I can't really turn my nose up at it. It's F-Zero is awesome. Star Fox is awesome. Okay, this is area two. More of these purple demons. Man, it sucks they got stuck on friggin' uh, capture duty here. Stuck in a little circle of pillars. More annoying for me since I can't hit them. Switch back to a more manageable magic. Okay. Yeah, they pull something else, as I recall. I don't think I ran into it here, but... Uh, when you forget the soul armor, it mentions that this armor lets you survive in space. Now, you notice we've been walking around what appears to be space for a while now and haven't really suffered any problems. But when you get to the third area, I seem to recall that if you don't have the soul armor equipped, you start taking damage. And again, this is kind of a... I guess they did it so you wouldn't pass up the armor by accident. But it still seems kind of a dick programming move, you know? I'm only putting blink bugs in the spot where these rotating, whatever the hell they are, the walls are bouncing up and down. Reminds me of something from friggin' uh, was it Xevious, that old uh, Nintendo shooter, arcade shooter. Okay, come on. So annoying to be right next to it to trigger it. Okay, good. Now we can get on, get on with it. Okay. Went up and yeah, it's best to try to avoid these. Honestly, though, if you're in a hurry, and let's face it, we're gonna have one more shortcut back to the ma the master's place and soul armor. Yeah, see, let's equip it right here. It says, enables you to walk in space. Apparently, I was walking in space before just fine. Very annoying. Let's see what we got. There should be everything here. Oh, yeah, those the wall things I should mention, that's what I was talking about as being... Well, I mentioned like, some enemies at the end of the game. You wouldn't think of them as enemies, you think of them as obstacles. But, 
when you get the fire, the phoenix magic, you'll find that you can kill them for a lot of experience. So even if you didn't somehow get leveled up properly up to this point, you can always just uh, equip the phoenix magic. And if you have the bell like I do, you can just equip the phoenix magic, the bell, and run through these areas over and over again, killing those rotating walls. And you'll get leveled up that way. As I've said before, I think the max level is 50. Never really gotten there because not really a need. Okay, this should be the Soul Blade. Okay, no reference to the Soul Edge. This blade simply allows you to use the Phoenix Magic, which activates whenever you swing your sword, and is the only thing that can kill these things. Equipping the bell means I can use magic in limited magic. It doesn't take much though. I think it only uses like one gem per shot. And since I've saved up my gems, fortunately it's not a huge deal. Like I said, at this point you could easily go back and forth entering the palace and killing those things to level up. But I don't really feel like doing that, so let's kill off this. This should be the second shortcut. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and save our game just to be safe. Yes, I know I'm using emulation, but I don't know. Using safe states, it just makes me feel dirty. Okay. Well, nothing left to do but fight the last boss. I always like it when you go into that first uh, area of the last boss's castle and it's all quiet. Yeah, yeah two forms as you might expect. Uh, yeah, it's easy to just get straight up here and zap the crap out of them with your phoenix magic. Hmm. This guy's just a bundle of cheer, isn't he? And here is the actual last boss. Big skull scary thing with two scepters. And yet still more intimidating than you, Yevon. <laughs> Okay. The real trick here is to avoid those lasers. Aside from that, you basically have to blow up the pillars. And only after you blow up the pillars is he vulnerable. Only for a few seconds. So, fortunately, you can kind of time the destruction of the pillars to get, away, get around that. Okay. Oof. This is a bit tricky. I remember this being very similar to the last boss in Illusion of Gaia. Probably not, you know, no big surprise. But in Illusion of Gaia, you have a form that can sink into the ground for a few seconds, so when the lasers get close, you just duck underground. I remember, like, the, the last boss of Illusion of Gaia being really easy because of that. Yeah, I say that. Now I'm gonna go play Illusion of Guy and get to the end, and it's gonna—he's gonna beat the crap out of me. If he does, point it out in the comments of that video, please. I could use a little humility. Okay, doing pretty good so far, and we still have our healing, uh, healing, <laughs> healing herb, healing herb. And rather appropriately, they didn't give you a, a HP. Uh, HP indicator on this guy. Would have. I don't know. For, an, for a last boss, I feel that's appropriate. I remember Breath of Fire always did this thing with uh, bosses. The first one, at least. You'd have like an HP gauge and you'd be wearing it down. But then you'd get it all the way down and say, oh, the boss got back up. And it'd be at a sliver. And it wouldn't tell you how much health he had left at, at that point. It was always really annoying, but, uh... I did, I did like the Breath of Fire series. Oh, and there he goes. We got him. 
finally, Bobbert defeated Death Toll. I'm not sure who we is in this context, but, uh, okay. As long as there are inventions in this, is this, this whole thing anti-technology? It's a bit much. If you figure out the reasons for all feelings, all connections, and existences, you will be wise like the master. Bobbert, get going. And with that, the world of evil disappeared. Yay me. Oh, you sound surprised, Master. <laughs> I get the feeling there's another version of this guy just sitting in like in the closet somewhere, just waiting for this guy to die. I guess, yeah, I guess we're doing the thing where we go back and talk to all the big people. And regardless of how fast the text was going in the rest of the game, this is going very slow. So I guess... Yes, yes, the ethics of... yeah. Well, while he's waxing philosophical, I guess we can go into so sort of why I like this game. Why I, I, I don't, I'm, I must have been sort of inspired by. It. I do like the idea of the master sending the hero down. Though, if you read the Elsewhere books, you know the dreamers aren't technically technically supposed to fill the role of heroes. We're more supposed to be the hero's friends or make it in a very a very direct comparison it's supposed to be like the wise old men and women in old fairy tales where the just hero does something kind and benevolent and to a seemingly old woman or old man and it turns out the old man or woman is some sort of fairy who gives them a magic MacGuffin but still if in the dreamers night you'll notice that one has no problem shirking that and helping the heroes directly. Well, he has problem with it, but when he's allowed to do it, he has no problem doing it. You're a doll, not a tool. Actually, I take it back. Maybe you are a tool. Let's see what else... I, don't know, I guess it is a kid when you get to this point in the game, you're just delighted. This is a great little game. My childhood, everyone. <laughs> well, one of them. It's the Gnome King. I made you an omelet. <laughs> Wait, so he's the Gnome King and his snail is named Gnome. Yes, I, I have to agree with that. At the same time, I... The idea of a lone hero kind of... With a mysterious origin, I kind of like that too. And it kind of works with the Dreamers as a whole, I'd imagine, as well. Especially given that, and you'll see it in a minute, his whole thing is he saved the world and he disappears. Sort of thing that you imagine legends would pop up from later. Pieces returned everywhere, not just... Okay. <laughs> yes, we know he lived with Dr. Leo. Ah, I think this is them trying to imply that maybe... Uh, Leo, Leo's wife, Dr. Leo's wife, reincarnated as the Mermaid Queen, I guess. Oh, and here come the dolphins. Bobbert. Bobbert. 
Yeah, I'm working on the last chapter of uh, Undertale for Deep 2 right now. I've actually got another side project I'm sort of playing with. It's not really a book. It started off as an idea for an expansion for, uh, or like a re... What's the term? Like Inderall from uh, Skyrim. Uh, like full conversion of uh, of Stardew Valley, a big a game I really enjoy. I've always had a soft spot for the farming sims. Harvest Moons, uh, Rune Factory. Really like Rune Factory. And I've been looking for a good version of a good thing like that for on Steam for ages. There's another one. I don't have my Steam list available at the moment. Remember, there's, there's another farming game on there. I uh, tried playing it. It's not that it's a bad game. It's got some bugs, but it's like still it's still an alpha, of course. Nope. Oh. Well, I was gonna say it's a. Uh, it wasn't the same. Stardew Valley is awesome. <laughs> I'll get back to the conversion when we get to the credits. This is like the last little scene. Again, they're kind of pushing the romance between Bobbert and Lisa, even though we've only had like a few meetings. Still dreaming about the underground waterfall area. Not really sure what I am either. If I was an angel, you think I'd have, I don't know, more power from the get-go. Then again, if I'm talking about elsewhere methodology, you can't be all powerful at the beginning, otherwise it causes problems. You gotta sort of sneak into it. In that manner of speaking, I guess he kind of fails because, well, he just pops out of nowhere and starts saving everyone. Nope. Yeah, sure, I would have to return. I don't think it gave me an option, though. Yeah, well, got to end sometime. Apparently, I just take off. Though, again, I have to ask. You've seen Dr. Leo's house, and we fixed most of it. Why is she still living in this little hut in the valley? Well, actually, no, I, I can think of a good reason. The machine to summon Death Toll is still there. And even if it's not functioning right, it'd be a little something. It'd be kind of weird to be living above that. But that's the ending they're trying to give us. They're giving us... Called Lisa, which called them the hero returns to the master, and Lisa pines for her and stares at the sunset. Apparently, also as a kid, this scene kind of impressed me because, uh, well, you'll see in a minute. As for the uh, the Stardew Valley mod I was talking about, the conversion. And again, I don't have any programming knowledge. I'd have to really learn from the ground up. But it kind of came, came it gave me the idea for at least a story. Uh, set in the Elsewhere universe. Where the farm is in the very center. Oh, there we go. But yeah, as a kid, that, that much anime, like that much... What will be the word for it? Pixel art? Having the full character fleshed out like that was just amazing. But the idea in a nutshell is a, a village or a town between two countries that liked each other. They were cooperating at one point, but then there's a war. The town gets split in half, basically. And uh, years later, you, in, you inherit the farm. But now the town, like, like it says, as I said before, has been split in half. It's two... What used to be the whole town is now two towns with the farm and kind of separating them. And the people on both sides don't really like each other. But I kind of like the idea of you as a farmer being able to give your crops 
to either side to support them and support growth of that city. Or to just kind of put it and support everyone. I've been writing concept stuff for it for ages, and like I said, I don't have any programming knowledge, so... Oh, and there's our credits. But it's an idea I've been kicking around. Graphics on I think they use the same font in the next game, too. And in um, Terra Enigma as well. Terra Enigma. Terra Enigma was a great game. I... I I'm shocked it didn't come to America. I would have loved that as a kid. As it is, I didn't get to play it until I was in my 20s. Yeah, it's just well done, Robert J. Robert L. Gerald. Enix. I remember back in the day where it seemed like Enix and Squaresoft were against, like, like the competing companies for my attention, it felt like. Enix had a ton of good RPGs. I, I want to say Seventh Saga was them, too. They, of course, had the Soul Blazer and the Illusion of Guy and that, that stuff. Terra Enigma. And on the other hand, Squaresoft had Final Fantasy, Secret of Mana... PlayStation era started to get started getting neat stuff like Parasite Eve, Einhander, which I really liked as a shooter, uh, Ecker Guys, which is uh... <laughs> I'll admit I picked that game up just to have a fight in a game where I could play as Cloud Strive. Well, I'm not sad, I'm not ashamed to admit it. And then they merged, and it's just it was weird. But also, it kind of feels like felt like proper, you know. Wouldn't mind to do Dragon Quest. The most recent one I played is the remake of Eight. Oh, and we reached the end of the credits, so the game is over. But not quite. My follower, tell me what is on your mind. I don't know what has happened between you and that girl. However, being attracted to a human means that you have not yet established yourself as a heavenly creature. See, this is why the Elsewhere has the Sunset Accord. Screw you, angels. And you demons, too. Well, the demons are usually a bit looser about that sort of thing. Maybe you should try living as a human being, learning how they live. Be warned, though, once you go down to Earth, you will lose all memory. Of course, because it's... Um... Hmm. You lose all memory, but people still recognize you. They know you're the one who saved the world. I feel something strange in the air today. Oh, and pop, just like that. <laughs> Oh, the touching reunion song. <laughs> yeah, if you say no, she just knows you're lying. Oh, sorry, if you say yes, she, she knows you're lying. Which is weird, because I, I definitely remember her. It's a D&D thing. Character knowledge, player knowledge. You think he could have given her, given him some memories back. He could have at least kept the memories from, you know, the fighting and everything. Still an optimistic ending, though, because they... They'll create, yeah, like she says right there, they'll create many good memories together. I have to imagine they lived in some variation of happily ever after. Go behind me is Turbo. Turbo the goat. I have to say, though, 
I'm more curious about the yeah, very charming turbo. About the decision to cut out that one part of the fence. I don't know. I guess that's, that's the way they leave. Yep. And there they go. And there goes the goat. And that puts a cease to my blathering for now and brings us to the end of the game. The true end of the game. Thanks for watching, and as soon as I figure out what I'm going to play next, I will start on it. So, have a good one.